how do you boost productivity? What's the number one thing the government can do right now? Well, in our budget submission, we've said that there are a number of key things that the government needs to focus on. In the first instance, it can do that by looking at a real red tape reduction program. In the second instance, we think that there is a program associated with how we can go about winning investment. And beyond that, there are initiatives around jobs and skills, what we can do to invest in that space. And then, of course, there is the all important question of how we can go about reforming our tax system. Fundamentally, mm -hmm. though, it's about how we can go about driving our economy to be more effective so that we can attract investment. OK, so say the unions get their wish of a 5% increase to the minimum wage, what would that do to the economy in your view? Well, it's difficult to quantify precisely what that would do, but what we can say is that we, we really need to make sure that ultimately people aren't left worse off because at the moment what we're trying to see with certainly the Reserve Bank's approach to managing inflation is that um, uh, the gains that people take home in terms of their pay packets uh, are ultimately gains that they feel day to day. And at the moment, when they get a boost to their pay, that's being eaten up with increases in costs. So ultimately, they don't feel as though they're getting ahead. The way that you can get ahead is by making sure that you deliver real wages growth. And that's why the productivity agenda is so important. So our urging to the Fair Work Commission is be very cautious here, um, be very cautious here, because we don't want to make sure that we don't that we deliver gains that are ultimately counterproductive by mm. driving up further inflation and therefore reducing the scope for the Reserve Bank to reduce interest rates as quickly as possible. OK, a couple of other issues here. Of course, uh, the supermarket, the big uh, supermarkets, Coles and Woolworths, that have all the market power, uh, well, a, a dominant in the market, have been under the spotlight. You know, the government uh, opposition crossbench is all over this at the moment. You've also been critical of the way they operate. How can this be fixed in this country? Uh, well, certainly the what, what we've got to do, I think the real challenge is that people are... The, 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 the fundamental problem that we're looking to try and address is that people are doing it tough. So that there are steps mm. that can be taken in order to try and address that. We've seen in the course of the last 36 hours that the Treasurer has mentioned the importance of providing um, the type of um, short-term relief that we've seen delivered over the course of the last 36 months or so, including utility relief and so forth. But then it goes to that broader question in terms of productivity and how we can start to see um, people genuinely get ahead day to day. Now, in terms of what we've seen in the last uh, week in relation to discussions around supermarkets, and divestments, um, we've been incredibly cautious and concerned with respect to the proposal that's been put forward by the Greens because, it, as we see it, it's not a proposal that's been backed by the evidence. We've seen a number of different uh, uh, reviews look at this question of divestiture over the course of the last three decades, and each time that has happened, each one of those reviews has come to the conclusion this is not a path that Australia should go down. OK, but had, what would you suggest then? Because the market power is becoming almost a political problem too. The, the, the challenge that we've got to look at in terms of um, market power and so forth is you've got to remember that Australia is uh, quite a small jurisdiction. So mm. we're, you know, three times uh, a smaller population than the UK. Um, yeah. And I think it's something in the order of 20 times uh, the size. So we've got different types of competition challenges here. Yeah. And I go back to that point. What is it that we're trying to do? Ultimately, we need to try and support people through what is a difficult time. And that's where those cost of living relief, relief initiatives really mm. come into play. But ultimately, we need to take the steps now that go towards delivering the longer term productivity growth that's yeah. necessary to deliver them real wages increases so that they take home more in the long term. I tell you what, a lot of people at home are looking at this conversation and others that have been in the lead up to this and saying, well, Australia produces all of this food, all of these groceries, and they're among the best quality. In fact, though, we're paying so much more than comparable countries um, when we go to the supermarket. So, look, I think this is becoming a huge issue in the lead-up to the election. We'll see what happens there. Before I let you go, I just wanted to ask you about the uh, electric vehicles, well, the encouragement of electric vehicles. The government was looking to put in uh, fuel emission standards. That bar has now been lowered. We're expecting to get an official announcement today. Is that something that you welcome? 
Yeah, we think it's really pleasing that uh, there is a process that's been underway of listening to industry concerns. We think it's appropriate to look at what the United States has done. Mm. Ultimately, everybody wants to move towards net zero. There's no question around that. But we've got to do it in a way that's both ambitious but also realistic. And we think that this approach uh, is reflective of both of those objectives. Okay, Brent, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you soon.